to another season long bet that we like to get into. Favorite season win total of the year. I started with Jeff last time. Let's start with Sammy this time. Anything out there catch your eye? Yeah, you can still find Buffalo over six at a couple shops, and the price disp discrepancy, rather, is minus 105 to plus 15. So always get the best number, of course. You know, Toledo gets a lot of love because they have all the talent in the MAC, but mm -hmm. Maurice Linguist is a third-year coach, and he is surprisingly and sort of quietly brought in two of the top talented classes in the MAC. And as you know, Bear, Talent is sometimes more than half the battle in the MAC. You know, <laughs> this team was awful two years ago because Lance brought everybody to Kansas, but Mo has had time to bring guys in. They have Cole Snyder back at quarterback who transferred from Rutgers. Their defense is always good. If they can run the football with success, I think Buffalo can win eight or nine games in a very down MAC this year. So I'm very, very bullish, no pun intended, on the Buffalo Bulls over six. I, I am still having horrible flashbacks to, I think it was 2019, where I had a beautiful preseason ticket on Buffalo to win the MAC, and they wound up blowing a big lead and lost in the MAC championship game. That, that one hurt quite a bit. Will, what do you got for us in the win total frontier? I hate to even go there, but it is a betting show. I just think Mississippi State under is a good bet. And, you know, he was such, Leach was such a good character for the game. He was so funny, so quirky. And, you know, from a football standpoint, we were finally going to get to see what he was like with the with, with big time athletes. Uh, I, I think we're, this was going to be a big year for him. Now you're going to transition to a younger coach, a defensive coach. The offensive line is going to have to change how they block. That's not a great defensive team. It's a tough schedule. There's some sixes. There's some six and a halfs that are juiced. I just think it's going to be hard for this team to get to seven wins to beat you. So, uh, look, I, I'm on under Mississippi State. It's just it's a shame. It's so bad for the game. But look, from a betting standpoint, I think Mississippi State under is a good bet. And, and you're, you're right. You look at the schedules front loaded. Arizona, who I think is going to be better this year. LSU at South Carolina and then Alabama. That's you're you're potentially. I mean, you should beat Southeastern Louisiana week one. So you're probably looking at two and three best case after five games. So you, you're probably onto something there. All right. Besides Oregon over, what are you looking at Jeff? <laughs> um, I'm going to go with a, a, a PAC 12 team here. Stanford's win total guys like two and a half, three, and they have Hawaii and Sac state on their calendar. Vegas is telling you they're going to be very bad and they're going to be very, very bad. They will not be favored in an entire game. This, this, this season, Troy Taylor, brand new coach. I like what he's doing with the program. They have no talent guys. They have no game records. They have no <laughs> players on offense. Like they're just a bad football team and that's okay. You have a bad football team. He's recruiting. Well, 2024 will be better. We know, look, they can't retool in the, in the portal. Like most can, they're not offering the NIL opportunities that most can. So it takes time to, build that roster but they're going to lose to hawaii this weekend i hope they beat sac state and they're not going to be favored in a single game the rest of the season and they have a tough kind of pac-12 north schedule because they really haven't realigned that yet so guys i i know it's boring maybe take stanford under two and a half but they're going to go two and ten at the best hey bear how about uh, this from, no, there, a numbers, there, from a number standpoint i've got stanford actually two points worse than northern illinois Ooh. From a power rating standpoint, I've got NIU at a 90. Husky, and a Husky with an IE. <laughs> Sorry, that's just the reality. They they are not good. They it's don't true. have any talent. Forget it. Is that line move well, this week too much? I mean, there were, it was 10, it was seven. Now it's three and a half. That's usually not a good way to do it. If you take you know, three and a half when you could add 10. What do you guys think about the uh, the game this week? I, I, I might be interested there, staying up a little late and may, maybe in the buy low situation. You, you know, our, our mutual friend there, a very prominent better, Steve, Steve Fezzik, he has a, a theory out there where, where the bridge too far, where ultimately the line moves a little bit too far one way and there's an opportunity to buy back. There might be an opportunity for that with the, uh, with the Utah-Florida game tonight as well. All right, I, we all have bet these season win totals. My favorite season win total that I have bet, and I'd like to get your opinion on it as well as LSU under nine and a half. So I am hoping that Will Hill is correct. The Florida state does win on, on Sunday night, but I look at LSU and the way they won some games last year, kind of snuck up on Alabama. The first five games of the year, you've got Florida state, Ole Miss and Mississippi state away from home. That doesn't include the road trip to a revenge minded Alabama and Texas A&M who have already mentioned. I like the Aggies this year. Like I, I, I think, LSU could be anywhere from 10 and two to seven and five. And, and I think if nine, nine and a half, that takes 10 to beat me. 
I, I, I like that bet because I, I just wonder, defensively, they bring in a bunch of new guys. They have a lot of secondary issues. I, I think they have some issues on the in the running back room now as well early in the year from what I – maybe some, some injuries that, that might uh, have not fully healed up by the time they take the field on Sunday night. So I, I think Florida State might be worth a play on Sunday, but I, but I do think LSU is probably – more of the nine and three, eight and four team than the than an eleven and one, ten and two national title contender. So, buy you Bengals under nine and a half, yay or nay? What say you guys? If Jaden Daniels takes that next step, guys, and he becomes the quarterback that people thought he would be as a true freshman playing at Arizona State now four years ago, if he takes that next step, they're going over this, right? So, this is kind of a wager on on Jaden Daniels. If he stays who he is or doesn't get any better, they're going to definitely go under. But if he becomes a Heisman hopeful, which I'm not quite sure he's going to be, I think they can get over the nine and a half. I don't feel great about it, but to me, this is the wager just solely on if a quarterback becomes a superstar or just stays what he is. If Alabama is better in the West, you know, that's probably a game that they're going to have to win uh, to keep LSU under nine and a half. But I mean, I, I texted you earlier, Baron. I didn't even know you had under LSU. I, I took under nine and a half at minus one Oh five. Not to be completely contrarian, but you, you get all these emails from all these sports books, and it's like, hey, the most liable we are on the SEC title is LSU. Yep. And the <laughs> most popular SEC win total is LSU because they were so good last year. And if the quarterback is better this year, they might do it. They might, but, I mean, there are a lot of landmines on that schedule. And Brian Kelly got really lucky down the stretch in a lot of games last year. There were three games that could have gone either way. They win all three of them. Does that happen again in the SEC? I don't know. Uh, I'm willing to bet under, though, because it's a short of Brian Kelly. And they have some issues in the backfield. They're on, like, running back three or four right now. I've been told the wide receivers aren't great. So quarterback needs help. You know, he's not the greatest quarterback in the country right now. So I've, I'm under nine and a half, too. But there's a lot of contrarian vibes for me, per usual. Yeah, Speaking of popular I, bets. Go, go ahead, ahead Will. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, I was going to say, directionally, I agree with you guys. Ball bounced their way last year, where if it doesn't, one, of the, one or two of those games go a different way. We feel differently about them. Just devil's advocate, they are returning a lot of continuity. I mean, head coach, both coordinators, quarterback. There's not a lot of teams in the country in this era where everybody's moving everywhere. There's not a lot of teams that could say that. So uh, would lean under, but not a bet for me. I, I was going to say, speaking of popular bets, Nothing is more popular than Colorado these days. All, all these, I don't, I, I probably shouldn't say idiots, <laughs> but all of these people betting Colorado to win the Pac-12, maybe win, win I like, what do, what, do, what do you do? And their win total is three and a half. Now, look, this could go really poorly, or it could be okay. Like it's, it's never been done before. Not only are you revamping the entire roster, you're revamping the entire coaching staff. Usually it's coaching staff comes in, he's got some players, and maybe there'll be a run a couple of, but he ran the, basically the entire team off after spring drills. So their win total is three and a half. I mean, if I had to play it, I would go under. Are, are you guys uh, under or over on, uh, on Colorado this year? What do, you, what, do you, what do you guys think? Bear, let me tell you, I almost drove to Colorado because I didn't have the ability to fly. I almost drove when they first hung a five <laughs> on Colorado. This is back in May. And I think it was, I don't even remember the book. It was under five at like minus 130. I almost got in the car and drove. It would have taken me three days to get there. <laughs> but I was going to do my damnness to bet under five. And now you got some books as low as three with uh, plus money to the over. I just, Dion has to be an A or an A plus coach to make this thing work this year, because this is not Jackson state. This is Colorado. This is a power conference. His offensive line is in shambles. His defensive line stinks. You know, I had a scout tell me the other day, don't be surprised if TCU runs for 400 yards this weekend, which is very possible. This is the time also, boys, to get Dion, to kick Dion when he's done. I know Sonny Dykes does not like Dion, and if he can win that game by 50, he will. I think that sentiment is very popular amongst the coaches in the conference. Yes. Let's get Dion now. Let's get him now. Sammy, you made the point that I think matters the most here, guys. When you watch the highlight videos that Colorado, that Colorado puts out, like they're fun to watch, right? So Jerry Sanders, I think, will play well this year. Travis Hunter is a great talent. But watch a little closer at the offensive defensive lines. The defensive line looks tiny, and the offensive line can't block anyone. Every video, Sanders is running for his life. And the reports are true. Sammy is right. The offensive line and defensive line are going to struggle this season. And you're playing a conference where you have to rush the passer, 
You play Washington, you play Oregon, you 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 play Utah, you play USC, you play Washington State, you play Arizona, like all these high-powered offenses with court. Got to rush the passer. On the flip side, you got to protect your quarterback. And right now, their offensive line is not good enough. They have 41 new players in their two deep. 41 new players. They all have to come together, play as one group. What happens when all the guys who transferred and thinking they're going to play don't play? Are they moping now? Are they sulking? Are they playing their way out? Like, there's a lot of moving parts here, guys. I would lean under here, especially early in the season. If they go two and three to start, one and four to start, how's the attitude on the team? Here's the important thing I want to Probably. Discuss. Bear is supposed to be my friend. Bear has my phone number. So when there's five and a halfs out there, four and a halfs, I, I'm looking at my phone right now. I never got a text. I never got a phone call. Hey, bet this. I was I out know, of like, the country when these fives and fives and a half. Like, I, I, I was, oh, wow. I, I was out of the country oh, wow. when five and five and a half came out. I was, and, and then I'm, I'm, I, I came back and I was begging for it to, to go back. Like, give me four. Just give me four. That way I can push on four and I won't lose. And, and it never came back to four. So. I'm naked on Colorado right now, but there might be an opportunity to, uh, to make some money game by game.